think you have heard it all in true crime. And then this last week or so happens and you're like, what the? Some of my content has mention of extreme violence, sexual assault, and or other triggering content. Discretion is advised. Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel, Code 187. Um, this week's been a doozy, y'all. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe the stories that I came up with. Um, yeah, so let's just dive right in. So I am sure that you guys have seen this headline in the last few days. So let me just read this headline and then I'll explain what happened, okay? A South Carolina man died from heart problems while burying the woman he strangled in the backyard. Right? Like I saw, I saw this headline and I was like, oh, if this ain't the best true crime story I have ever heard, I don't know what is. <laughs> so a 66 year old man um, strangled his wife. He wrapped her in trash bags and was basically in the process of burying her in the backyard um, while covering her up in this like homemade grave he made he had a heart attack and died um the cops showed up the next morning because someone called and said there's a guy laying in his backyard unresponsive um they find him dead and then they see this covered pit so they dug that up and they found the remains of a 65 year old woman named patricia dent I think this is his wife, girlfriend, partner, whatever it may be. Um, it said that they lived in the same house. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> I hope that wherever Patricia is right now, whether it be heaven or the afterlife or whatever it is, I hope she is just laughing her ass off. Because if this is not karma, I don't know what is. Like... I, I wish that it had happened before she died, um, but if that is not karma, I don't know what is. Um, I just picture like her going into heaven and God being like, well, what do you want me to do? And her being like, end it now. And him just striking him down. Um, my heart goes out to Patricia's family. I hope that they are laughing as well at how this guy got his, what he deserved, basically. I just wish it would have happened before the murder. Um, so rest in peace to Patricia. And that's it. Our next story is the story that the nation has been talking about, and that is of the whites. If you don't know what this is, you've been living under a rock. Um, <laughs> It's a crazy, crazy story um, with lots of twists and turns. Um, so basically, there is this man, Casey White. He was a prisoner. And working in his prison was a guard named Vicki White. Now, they are not married or related as far as I could tell. Um, but they're, both of their last names is White. Um, they were carrying on a relationship and the other day, um, she said, hey, I'm going to go to a doctor's appointment. And she walked out with Casey saying that she's going to drop Casey off at his appointment and then go to hers. And they ran away together. Um, they ditched 
the cop car um got in, in another car and they it, manhunt manhunt ensued and that has been going on for the last week or so and uh they've spotted them different places they finally zeroed in on a car wash where casey white was and they followed him to a motel and found vicky and casey together um they followed them and basically a cop rammed the car it flipped um casey white the prisoner was apprehended pretty fast after and unfortunately in the process vicky white committed suicide by shooting herself in the head um there is some cop footage some police um footage out there um of this i mean it blocks out vicky but it does show uh the flipping of the car um them getting casey and then them trying to revive vicky she later died at the hospital succumbed to her injuries and casey went back to jail this story has been national news um pretty much everywhere during this manhunt what I found was interesting about this was Casey's previous charges. So he was in jail for murder. He murdered a woman and confessed. It was a 15 year, 59 year old Connie Ridgeway. He's a murderer and he was supposed to be sentenced to 75 years in prison. Um, he also went on a crime spree before he was captured, where he um, did some breaking and entering, um, home invasion, carjacking, and a police chase. This is a super, super sad story. I wish that it didn't end this way for Vicky, but I'm also glad that Casey is off the streets. Like, this is a hardened criminal, and I feel like Vicky should have and could have done way better for herself than this man but i know that abusers can be manipulative so yeah um and that is the story of the whites uh they ran away together kind of like a bonnie and clyde situation it's not so romantic you know people romanticize all that stuff and it's not that great so one of them ended up prison one of them ended up dead <sighs> that's the story now, our next story is the one that I really wanted to focus on this week and also do most of my research on. This is a very, very tragic case. Um, the other two have had a little bit of humor. I mean, we can laugh at true crime as well. But this story is the saddest I think I've heard in a while. And that is of Lacey Fletcher. So Lacey is a 36 year old woman from Louisiana um, and she was found January 3rd. Um, the way she was found is very triggering. So trigger warning, this is going to be very, very bad. I'll pause a second. If you wanna skip or log out of this video, please do so now. Um, so <sighs> she was found almost melted into the couch that she was laying on. Um, her legs were under her and sunken into the couch. There was ulcers that went all the way to the bone. She was covered in feces and urine and she hadn't been moved in years. Lacey weighed only 98 pounds and also was infected with COVID-19. She had not been or seen a doctor in probably 20 years. Um, so let's talk about how Lacey got in this position. Um, Lacey told her parents at one point that she did not want to leave home. This was about 10 years ago. Um, her condition, um, anxiety, I believe, got worse. Um, and I don't know if the anxiety triggered this or um what because it didn't really say 
but Lacey suffered from locked in syndrome. Now, the way I can explain this the best is your brain is functioning. You are aware of everything that is happening. You can only move your eyes. Everything else is completely paralyzed. So Lacey was aware of everything happening around her, um, but she could not physically move. Now, locked in syndrome seems like such a helpless disease or problem. Um, one in three Americans have this. Um, it's usually from a brain disease, um, overdose, poisoning, or b horrible brain injury. Um, and I don't know if hers happened from anxiety or other things as well, but we do know that she suffered from locked in syndrome. So how did we get here? How did Lacey get in the position that she was? Well, um, this is a severe case of neglect. Um, of course, Lacey was 36 and was not a child, but when you have someone who cannot help themselves, you have a neglect situation. Um, medical neglect, because she wasn't going to a doctor. Physical neglect, because she was just sitting on a couch for all those years. And um, it's just really sad how this all happened. Her parents explained that they wanted to take her to a facility, but never really did it. Um, she was dead for about two days before she was found. However, the mother said that she was alive um, when she went to bed, and when she woke up, Lacey was unresponsive. But from the autopsy, we know she had been dead a while. Um, the parents left her to die. Basically, they left her to just rot. Um, and she could have been helped. Especially if this happened from anxiety, um, if these are things that could be helped and it was not. Now I know a lot of locked in syndrome cannot be helped, but in her case, if it was anxiety, it could have been helped. So it's just really sad that Lacey's life had to end this way. Now, what really disgusted me was that Lacey's parents lawyer um, released a statement and I'm going to read this verbatim. Um, it says they don't want to relive the pain of losing a child through the media. They've been through a lot of heartache over the years. Anyone who has lost a child knows what this is like. Let me just say um, that I have reported on a lot of parents who have lost their children. I've heard a lot of stories of parents who have lost their children. You did this to your child. You had a responsibility to Lacey. Um, Lacey could not survive on her own and you let her die. And I do not know the experience of losing a child. Um, however, I do know that you have a responsibility to your children until you die. It doesn't matter if she's 36. She had a condition where she needed help from you and at least take her to a facility, at least take her to someone who will help her. And it just disgusted me to hear that because it's kind of a slap in the face to people who do lose their children in other ways. Um, so it was just horrible. So the prosecution is hoping to get a second degree murder charge. Um, it would carry a life sentence um, and no parole for adults, um, but it's up to the jury to decide their fate. What do you think in this case? Um, please tell me your opinions below. Um, also tell me your opinions on the other two stories I covered. Um, Lacey's case, I saw this and it broke my heart. I cannot imagine the amount of pain and fear that she was going through. And I'm honestly happy for her that she's in a better place now um, because her parents didn't care. So that's really sad.
Um, the other two cases, uh, the cases of the whites, the cases of the man who buried his wife and died. Please tell me your thoughts on those. Um, they're little snippets uh, because they're kind of ongoing things and they're just headlines that just really drew my attention this week. Let me know of any other stories that you have heard that are crazy true crime um, or any cases you want me to cover, um, any victims you want me to speak out about. <sighs> it's been, <laughs> true crime has been very heavy the last little while. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for listening to the stories of the victims in all of these. Um, and thank you so much for being here and watching my content. I still cannot believe that I'm here and this is happening. <laughs> um, I love you guys so much. Every time I get a good comment or someone who tells me I'm doing a good job, it is just so worth it of all the haters out there. <laughs> um, I love you guys. You guys are my community, you're my family, and I cannot wait to build and grow with you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in this week, and I wish you all well, except for Casey White, Lacey's parents, and the man in the backyard. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Hi guys, I just wanted to say I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like any of the content for Code 187, please click that subscribe button, that like button, that share button. Help us out, help us grow. Um, you can find us on your favorite podcast platforms. Um, yeah, check us out on there. Give us some ratings. Um, tell us what you think. We're also across every social media on Code187. So we're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I think that's it. Um, and of course, YouTube. So please, please, please subscribe um, if you like our content and spread the word. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.